Hi, my name is Brian with Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio, and welcome back to another quality video from appliancevideo.com. We have a Maytag uh, bottom mount freezer refrigerator, and the complaint was uh, no cool in the refrigerator section, the freezer section still seemed to be uh, frozen. So uh, the first thing we did was uh, opened it up and checked our airflow. We found that we weren't getting airflow uh, to the refrigerator section out of the uh, damper. Um, so I looked down uh, into the freezer section. We seen frost built up on the back panel, which is a, a sign of a defrost problem. So this unit wasn't going into uh, self-defrost. Uh, so what we're going to have to do, um, I put it into the diagnostic mode uh, through the control board and forced it into a defrost mode. Uh, it did then come on and started defrosting, so we know that our heater and termination uh, were both good, and um, we're going to have an issue with the control board during normal operation, not putting it through the defrost mode. So we're going to need to defrost um, the evaporator manually and replace our control board. The tools needed for this repair are a pair of needle nose pliers, a flathead screwdriver and a quarter inch nut driver. Uh, so the first thing we have to do to access our evaporator is we're going to have to take our drawers and door off of our freezer section. Uh, so to take the top uh, sliding drawer out here um, or rack, we're going to take uh, the two screws out of each side of the track that, it's, um, that it slides on. Uh, there's going to be a quarter inch screw that you take out, so we're going to take both of those out. And we're going to raise up slightly our tracks on each side so it can slide underneath them. Uh, now we can pull our drawer out. We're going to find on the back of the drawers here, there's going to be these two uh, brackets that clip in the, uh, the roller bar onto our track there. So there's going to be two tabs on each one that you have to push in. You can use a flat bladed screwdriver or something like that to push the two tabs in while you lift it up. So I have this one. Um, if you push the tabs in here, it'll lift up on each side. I've already done that on this here. And now your drawer, you're ready to take your drawer out just by lifting up and pulling, pulling out. And the next thing uh, we're going to do is take the, the front of our uh, door off. To do that, there's going to be four quarter inch screws on the inside here. And we're going to have to take those out. You can um, actually just loosen them all up. You don't have to take them out completely. So we're just going to loosen our quarter inch screws. That way our uh, drawer can be lifted off of the, uh, the basket. So once you got that, just slide them up and off of the, the grooves there. Now you can also take your basket out. It's easier to do with that door off. You just lift it out. Now we can take our uh, our our tracks out. Um, there's going to be two tabs on either side to take out, and you can use a flat head screwdriver. To get those out with, you're just going to press in on the tabs and pull out on your metal tracks here as you push in on the tabs. That'll slide out. Same thing on this side. And I'm going to try and keep this all together as one assembly so we don't have to line up the, the rollers on the track again. Now the next thing we got to do uh, to get our back panel here off to get to the evaporator is remove our ice maker and get it out of the way. There's two quarter inch screws that hold it in place. Actually there's three, there's going to be one on the bottom here. Remove that one completely. Um, the one in the back here we can loosen and also both of the top ones, the back and the front, you can just loosen to take the ice maker off. You don't have to take them completely out. Ice maker will just lift up and off the screws. Actually, the back one's going to have a clip, so you do have to take the back one out completely. The front one you can just loosen. 
and then lift the ice maker up and off. The wire harness in the back, there's just two tabs you have to push in on, and then pull the wire harness straight out. And we get our ice maker out of the way now. Uh, the back panel is going to have um, the fan cover here. Uh, to remove that, you're going to release the tab holding it in place in the center, in the bottom center, right there. So we're going to push in on that tab with the flathead screwdriver. Uh, so then to take off our uh, evaporator fan cover here, uh, we're going to release the middle tab with the flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to push in on that tab while pulling out on the panel of the cover there. Also, there's going to be another tab, uh, the top right side, uh, to insert a screwdriver and release a tab while pulling out. Once you get that one, we're going to have to push this one in again. Also, on this side, it's going to be another one tab to release. You can see the, the tabs on each side that we released and the one on the bottom here. Or the, where the one on the bottom goes, the tab is here on the evaporator fan housing that goes through this part. So we can get that out of the way. And then also there's going to be a, for our, uh, our sensor, there's going to be a, our sensor cover. We're going to insert a screwdriver. There's a slot to insert the screwdriver. To release the tab, it even has a picture of a screwdriver on there to let you know where you got to go with it. And then it's hinged on the right side, the left side will pull over. You can take the tabs out of the right side and take the sensor out of the clips and remove it out of the cover there. Get the cover out of the way. And there's going to be, uh, next we're ready now to remove our, our back panel. Um, to make it a little easier, if you'd like, you can remove one or both of our tracks on the side here. And there's going to be three quarter inch screws on each track to uh, take off and remove if you prefer. Um, we're just going to have to bend it a little more. I like to leave these in and just remove it with the tracks in place. So to get to the back panel, now to finish taking the back panel off, there's four screws in each, one in each corner to remove. They're quarter inch screws as well. So we're going to take those off. Now we can remove our back panel. And actually what we're going to have to do to get this completely out is take a pair of needle nose pliers and remove our ice maker wire harness from the back panel. We're going to push in on the two tabs and push it through the panel. Now we can take this completely out. And you can see um, the frost that's built up. We have, we have it in a defrost mode right now. Um, this was completely packed with ice. It's starting to melt now. You can hear the heater sizzling as the water heats it. So we're going to have to finish uh, manually getting rid of all the frost here that's built up. All right, and we already know that we have a bad control board um, because we forced it into defrost and the heater and termination came on. It's, it's in a defrost mode now. But if, um, if you needed to check your heater or termination, um, to see if they're good or not with your own meter. Um, you're going to do that. Uh, our termination is right here on the evaporator. Um, you have an orange and a brown wire and they trail back to this wire harness right here. So you would, um, it's, you can unplug that two tabs. You're going to pull straight down and you would go, uh, with it unplugged, you're going to go from your orange to your brown wire that are hooked up to your termination. You should have continuity through there. Um, audible tone is fine. And then uh, to check your heater would be, uh, it's going to be your white wire. The heater is here, down across the bottom it comes up. There's actually a harness on each side. You can unplug it there and there um, and check it, uh, check the heater from there to there. Or with this unplugged, um, you can check it through your termination um, at, the, at the orange wire again that we checked our termination through and the white wire. Um, here that actually you could either check it at the um, our neutral wire which actually connects to our, our ice maker harness here or goes back up to that connector we unplugged 
to check the termination. Um, just know if you check it through that harness, it's actually running through the termination as well. So to actually just get the heater, you would unplug both sides of the heater and check it um, at those two wires just to get your heater in the circuit without the termination. All right, so now that we have our evaporator cleared um, of all the frost, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just put it all back together, starting with our back panel. Uh, we need to bring our sensor through the opening here and we need to reconnect our uh, ice maker harness uh, back into the back panel before we get it completely back there. Uh, bring our fill tube through the other hole here. Um, make sure you have everything plugged back in if you tested your wires uh, or your heater or your termination, plug everything back in. So we'll go ahead and get this back here. And I'm going to plug in our uh, ice maker harness. It's got two tabs that'll lock into the back panel. And bring our harness through the opening, or I mean our sensor through the opening here. guide our fill tube through the opening there as well. And we're going to reinstall our four uh, quarter inch screws into each corner. And uh, next we can put our covers back on, the one for the sensor, uh, hinged on the right side. It's got two tabs that will go into the two holes of the back panel. Um, we need to put our sensor through the hole at the top of the cover and put the wire through the next hole and snap it into place with the tabs at the bottom there and then we can put those hinges back in the two right tabs into the two holes and snap the left tab in place make sure it's secure and now we have our cover uh, for the uh, our cover that goes over the evaporator fan housing um, we're just gonna push it into place and make sure all three tabs lock into place Next, we can put our um, tracks back in. Uh, the next step would be to put our ice maker back in, um, but we're going to leave it out um, for the customer, so we're not going to be putting our ice maker back in. So the next step is going to be our tracks. So with this together, we're just going to slide it into place here, just lightly, just barely put it into place. And um, with this track, um, take note when you take it out. Um, we need to take note when we take it out of where um, where it lines up at according to according to these notches. There's notches here that are um, different than the rest of them. The first four here that are, are notched out on the bottom on each side. So um, those when it rolls in and out uh, are going to hit other notches along the way so that they have to line up. So when you get it to the last uh, groove here, you have to note where those are. And it's usually um, the first um, notch here, you're gonna line up with the first notch of the ones that are notched out uh, here. So we're gonna line those up like that. So we're lining up those notches here um, under the notches of the track. Once you get those lined up, you can push it all the way in. It'll lock into place where we had the two tabs at on each side. Um, it'll lock onto those tabs. And then you just want to bring this, this out here and make sure it's, it goes in and out smoothly. It, could, it needs to catch here. Um, when the door's on there, it helps to pull the door in and, and shut it once it gets to that point. Um, so it looks like we're lined up just fine. Make sure you're the same distance um, into the refrigerator on each side here so that the door is not crooked one way or another. And that looks good. So we're going to, uh, the next step then in our case is uh, going to be putting the baskets back in in the front of the door. Now we can put our basket back in. I'm going to do our upper basket first. And what we're doing here is we're going to lift up on the, on the tracks on each side to slide the, this bar underneath there. So we're going to do that on each side. And push the tracks back down once you get it in there on each side. And then pull your basket 
out until it hits, until you can't pull it out any further with the two tracks down. So it's all the way up against the tracks on both sides. And now we're going to push down uh, the brackets for our, uh, our roller support. So we're going to push these back down and lock them into the place. There's two tabs on each one that'll lock in. And that way everything lines up. We're going to test this rolling it in and out, make sure that the bars are even and flush with the brackets. Um, we can now put our two screws back in that hold the tracks in place. And next we're going to put our basket in, our lower basket in for the freezer. And we're just going to place this basket. There's, uh, there's notches in uh, the plastic track on each side, this track here. Um, so we're gonna line each each one of our bars are gonna go down through the notches. Alright, and you can roll this in and out and test it, make sure it goes in nice and easy. Put our door on. We have our four uh, notches here. We didn't remove our screws completely, they're just loose on the door. So, we're going to set the door in place, make sure the screws go into each groove, and we can tighten those back down. got those lined up, we're just going to tighten them back down now. Now you can make sure your door closes and seals up good. Check your uh, door seal for any gaps. The top and the sides and the bottom. Now we can go up top and install our control board. To replace the main control board, which also controls our defrost, um, we're going to have to access our control housing here uh, in the fresh food section. So uh, the first thing we need to do is remove our light cover in the back here. Uh, we're going to do that by grabbing the cover and pulling straight back. There's a tab in the back that it'll release from. So you have to just grab it and pull straight back and the cover comes off. There's where um, the tab goes into. And the next thing is there's going to be two tabs in the back here that we're going to have to put our uh, screwdriver into and uh, push in. We're going to have to push in pretty hard on these to release them. Um, you can remove the top two shelves to make it easier for you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and release those tabs. When you do that, um, you know, want to pull down on that on each side to release it as you push in. So basically I'm putting my screwdriver in the hole and forcing the screwdriver upwards to release the tab. And the back will drop and the front has tabs that'll, that it'll come down from. Um, so you can remove it. And um, there's our control board and our sensor over here. Uh, so uh, to remove the control board now, we just release our Molex connectors by pushing in the tabs and pulling straight out. And uh, the control board just sits in some tabs. Um, so one of our tabs here and a tab here to release. So we're going to pull back on the tab and pull the control board out of the tab there. Um, it's actually two different boards connected through a, a ribbon cable. It's all one assembly. So we're going to release this tab and pull out pull out of the tabs in the back and remove our board. 
all right, now we have our new control board. Um, we're gonna assemble it, or not assemble, but adjust it so that it, um, so that the front of our board here uh, aligns with our, the back of our board and the ribbon cables like so, just like the old one. So you're gonna match up the new one to the old one. You might have to move this around to get it to go uh, to where it was like the old one. And we're gonna install it into our panel here. All right, we're gonna put the front edge of our board into the tabs. Uh, look it down the bottom here and um, it's going to sit in these tabs around the edge here. So we're going to place that in the tab there, line it up side to side with the other tabs. And we're going to push it into this tab here, pull the tab back a little bit, push it in place. And that one's lined up with all the tabs. And we're going to do the same with our front one. The bottom edge is going to go down into this tab and this tab actually four tabs here across the bottom, three tabs, I'm sorry. And your buttons are gonna obviously line up with the holes in the front uh, where you would press the user, your user interface here. So with those in place, everything lined up, we pull back on this tab and snap it into place. And just make sure everything's lined up, press your buttons, make sure you can hear all the clicks for all four buttons. And we can reconnect our uh, Molex connectors. They just snap into place. And now we can put our panel back in place. Um, the front four tabs here are going to go into the front four holes like a hinge almost. And we're going to push the back up and snap the two tabs in the back into place. The last thing to do is just uh, reinstall our light cover. Um, we're going to line up the, the tabs on the front into the tabs at, in the front of the panel and our tabs in the back also and there's going to be a tab that locks it into place here. So we're going to line all those up and then bring it forward, snap it into place. Alright, so to program the board then, um, you're going to press in on both door switches. Press the freezer temperature down key three times. Release your door switches and it'll say PE. Uh, the next step to do is uh, hit the freezer down key one more time and it'll display zero, zero. And uh, once we're at to that point, we can look at the code. Ours is a 12 and enter in uh, the 12. Uh, so we have a one here and a two here. And to do that, uh, you're going to use the refrigerator up keys, the refrigerator and freezer up keys. So we're going to go 1 and 2 to make our 12. And after that's done, we press and hold the, the freezer uh, down temperature key until it's flashed, until the panel starts flashing at us. So we're going to hold that down. Now it's flashing. So we can release that. And um, all that's left then is um, you can close your doors. The programming's done at this point. So I'm just going to act like we're closing the doors. And when you open the, open the doors back up, uh, it'll display your recommended settings at 4 and 4. You can hear the compressor turn on, the fans turn on. And um, now you're done. Thank you for watching another quality video from appliancevideo.com.